Hola y buenos días. Soy Ruth y estoy aquí, I'm here, para presentar una clase de español. Let's begin. Comenzamos, amigos. Today, we're going to describe la familia. So this is a Duolingo Spanish lesson very early on en el curso de Duolingo. Y the first thing we have to do is learn el vocabulario. Let's get to it. So we're starting with el padre. El padre is the father. El padre. You might know this if you're in the military. We have el padre. He's the religious leader in the military in Inglaterra, in England. La madre is the mother. Madre mía. Mamma mía. Madre. La madre. The next word, upper generation, is la abuela. La abuela is the grandma. So this one you have to learn. It's quite diferente. La abuela. And what do you think the grandfather will be? Well, el abuelo. We're just making it masculine. El abuelo y la abuela. And then let's go down a generation because we have abuelo, padre, abuela, madre, and then we need the word for son and daughter. And again, we need to learn these. El hijo. Isn't that different? It's difficult. We're not saying the letter H, so it's E to start, and a J, una J in Espanol, makes a H sound. So we have El hijo, un hijo, and that's the word for son. The word for daughter, then, you can guess. It's la, because it's a feminine noun, and it's hija. Instead of the o, it's an a. La hija. Okay, we have abuelo, padre, hijo, abuela, madre, Hija. Isn't that nice? Next up, we have some other people in La Familia. We have El Hermano. Now, El Hermano, it starts with an H and we're not saying that H. There's no H sound associated con la H in Espanol. So it's El Hermano. It sounds almost like an airman, doesn't it? Like somebody who flies a plane. El Hermano. So you can guess the feminine word, the sister, is la hermana. La hermana. El hermano y la hermana. Bien. Now what about if you're married? Well, that, then you have a spouse. So the word is esposo. If we're talking about a husband, el esposo. Anything that starts with S and a, and a consonant in English tends to start with ES and a consonant in Espanol. Think about Stefan, Estefano. And so it is with spouse, esposo. So you can guess the word for wife. La esposa. Okay, amigos, I'm sure that you're doing great at this. Now we have el vocabulario. We need to learn to use it. And to do that, we're going to start with the verb tener. Tener means to have, and we have come across this before. Yo tengo is I have. It's slightly irregular because tener doesn't have a G in it, but tengo does. I think of I have as ten go, tengo, tengo. Okay. You have is tienes. Remember, tú, tú tienes. Tú is an informal or casual way of saying you. So tú tienes is an informal or casual way of saying you have. Él tiene and ella tiene. They're both the same. 
El and ella use the same verb. Now I think of tienes as T-N-S. Tu tienes. And he has as T-N-A. El tiene. Ella tiene. I hope that helps. It helped me. So if I want to ask, do you have a brother? Remember, we don't need to translate that word do. In Spanish, we just say, you have a brother. So how would we say that? Well, we need the tu form for tener, which is tienes. And you can include tu if you want to, the word for you. So then you would have tu tienes. And the word for a brother, think of that airman, un hermano. Tu tienes un hermano. And maybe you want to say, yes, I have a brother, which is si. Yo tengo un hermano. Or maybe just si. Tengo un hermano. Okay? Yo, yo is an optional word in those sentences. We don't need to include the pronouns if we don't want to, amigos. In fact, in Espanol, the pronouns like yo and tu and el and ella are included about 30% of the time. So it's not wrong to include them at your discretion. The next one, do you have a son? How would you say that? Well, it's the tu form we're using and you can use the word for you have, tienes, and then the word for a son. Difficult one, hijo. Tu tienes un hijo? Again, answer in the comments. You might want to say, no, I have a daughter. Now, if you say no, you put no, nice short o, oh, no, at the beginning. And then you need to say, I don't have. The word no, acts as the word don't, and it comes straight before the verb. So you can say, no tengo una hija. No, no tengo una hija. You see how we end up using the word no twice. If you include the word yo, like I say, the word no goes immediately before the verb. So it would be no. Yo no tengo una hija. Maybe you want to ask about another person. And then you would say, um, for example, does he have a wife? Maybe somebody that you're interested in for yourself or for a friend, if you're single. Does he have a wife? So the word for he is el. And all we're going to say is he has a wife. So we need the word for he has, which is tiene. And a wife is una esposa. El tiene una esposa? If he does, si, sí, él tiene una esposa. If he doesn't, we say no. And then we need to say he doesn't have a wife, which is no tiene una esposa. But if we're saying él in there for he doesn't have a wife, we want to point out that it's he, we would say no, él no tiene esposa. Remember, no comes straight before the verb. I also want to introduce the words for your and my. So your is simply tu, tu familia, and it doesn't change regardless of whether we're talking about a masculine noun or a feminine noun. It's tu familia. And my family is mi familia. And again, it doesn't change according to the gender of the noun. So it's mi familia, mi padre, mi madre, just as it would be tu familia, tu padre, or tu madre. The words for my and your aren't gender dependent. So that's nice. You need to contrast these words as well with the word you, which is tu, and it does have an accent. So do you have a family? Tu tienes una familia? And also for me is me with an accent. So por ejemplo, El café es para mí. Gracias. So that's just something to note. Now, in this lesson, la idea es describir una familia. So we need some words to describe a family. So we could say, bueno, mi hermano es inteligente. 
Mi hermano es elegante. Mi hermano es grande, por ejemplo. And you'll notice that the letter G has different pronunciations there. So when we get a letter G, un G, una G en español, we have to say it as a H sound any time it becomes before the letters E or I. And that's why we have inteligente. However, at other times it makes a G sound. So elegante y grande. Now inteligente ends with the letter E. So it doesn't change regardless of whether we're describing someone who's male or female. Mi hija es inteligente. Mi hijo es inteligente. The same word. If I say una niña inteligente, you notice that the word inteligente has come after the word niña. An intelligent girl, we put the word intelligent in front of the noun. En español, we're putting the word inteligente after the noun. Una niña inteligente. Let's have a look at some more examples. Mi abuela es elegante. Now you're saying, Ruth, the word elegant has come after the word abuela. Yes, because I have the word is. Mi abuela es elegante. But if I want to say she's an elegant woman, ella es una mujer elegante. Okay, how about a cat and a dog? They are also parte de la familia. Now a cat is un gato. So that sounds a little bit like cat, doesn't it? Because we have gato. And a dog is un perro. Do you have a dog or a cat? Tienes un perro o un gato? Tell me in the comments. Yo no tengo un perro y no tengo un gato. Now we have interesante, which also ends with an E. We have bonito, which means pretty, but it can also describe a man, so good looking perhaps. And perfecto. Perfecto and bonito end with the letter O. Now, what do you think will happen when I start to describe somebody feminine? Yo quiero describir mi familia. Mi esposo es bonito. Mi abuela es bonita. You see how the O changes to an A when I'm describing mi abuela. And that's because mi abuela is feminine and so the adjective needs to be feminine too. My dog is perfect. My family is perfect. Mi perro es perfecto. My family, mi familia, is perfect, es perfecta, right? Because it's a feminine noun. Mi familia, la familia, la familia perfecta. Bueno, la familia perfecta no existe, pero mi familia es perfecta we can start to create dialogues, which is what we want to do with our Español, ¿verdad? So you can ask somebody, uh, Maria, do you have a brother? Or if you're asked, you can say, yes, I have a brother. And you can say what he's like. You can say that he's intelligent and interesting. Or if he's not intelligent and not interesting, you can say that. Let's have a go at that. Maria, do you have a brother? Maria, ¿tienes un hermano? Yes, I have a brother. Sí, tengo un hermano. He's an intelligent man. Es un hombre inteligente. And very interesting. Y muy interesante. Do you have a dog? ¿Tú tienes un perro? I, no, I don't have a dog. No, no tengo un perro. I have a cat. Tengo un gato. It's a big cat. Es un gato grande and very elegant. Y muy elegante. 
So friends, I would like you to practice that. I would like you to use that. Make sure that you know this vocabulario and I would like you to know this list of people who might be en tu familia. And you can test yourself if you download that PDF, which is free and there's no sign up and there's a link in the description. Es muy fácil. It's very easy. And I would like you to subscribe and click the notification because then of all your subscriptions, you'll get a little pop up when you get another lesson of Learn Spanish Duolingo. Hasta la próxima, amigos. Adios.